What's up tribe? Today we're talking about plantar fasciitis. Thank you very much Eamon for shouting out and asking us to do this video. We love it when we get questions like that. So plantar fasciitis, we're going to start this in theory and then we're going to come out and I'm going to show you some great techniques to overcoming long-term plantar fasciitis. First of all, let me explain a little bit about what plantar fasciitis is. I've drawn a pretty shit drawing here on the board but that'll do. It's a inflammation or micro tearing and inflammation of the plantar fascia tendon, which is this guy up here. Basically, I'll get my texture again. It basically sort of reaches out to each of the toes. Now, it crosses the majority of the foot and you can get inflammation or pain symptoms from anywhere along that tendon, uh, that fascial line, but the majority of people experience it right here in the middle of the foot or somewhere around the heel of the foot. And how do we get it? Basically, long-term overuse and strain. One of the main leading causes of plantar fasciitis is wearing really bad shoes when you're running or just being overweight and carrying a lot of extra weight. So one of the key things, and most of you watching this probably won't like this, one of the key fixes of plantar fasciitis is to stay lean, strong, and flexible. Because if we're nice and flexible, then the muscles that contract and create tension in the foot aren't going to contract in the first place. So let's quickly go through a few of the key causes or the things that we can sort of work on to fix it long term. As I said there before, maintain a healthy body weight is super important. If you're carrying an extra 20 or 30 kilos, it's gonna be very, very hard for your body long term to avoid stress and strain on the muscles that sort of support the foot, which is mostly the calves. Second is don't wear high heels. This is especially important for women when you're walking around on elevated heels. And this is even the case with some of the sports footwear that are available now with a really big fat sole. Elevation of the heels shortens the tendons in the ankle that sort of support the leg. If I draw a little picture here of a foot, leg, knee, leg, I don't know if you can see that. So the tendons here that cross the ankle, you've got your gastrocnemius and your soleus muscle here, they're obviously going to shorten if that heel is elevated, if we're standing on an elevated sole. So it's very, very important to shorten the soles and we even like to train barefoot. Um, can you see that? Yeah? Yeah. We're training at the moment, the guys are out there, I'm training and we train barefoot because we like to lengthen all of those tendons. Okay. So don't wear high heels. Avoid wearing old shoes, especially if you're running. Sports shoes, the soles eventually collapse. They usually last about 12 months, depending on how long or how much you're using them. But I always say, if you're relying on the, sh the shoes for support, after 12 months, it, the, the, the support's generally gone. So you need to re be replacing your sports shoes fairly regularly. Uh, then stretch your arches and calves. This is super, super important. And I'm gonna take you out on the gym floor in a second, show you how to do this. But there are a few set stretches that you can do that will give you a lot of benefit. And finally, strengthen your feet and calves. And one of the best ways to strengthen your feet, believe it or not, is walking on soft sand on the beach. So if you live near, um, near a beach, one of the gold standard foot strengthening exercises you can do is go for a five and then build up to a 10 and then build up to a 15 minute walk on that soft sand. That's gonna do wonders for the muscles and the tendons and connective tissues in your feet and calves. I do warn you though, if you're suffering from an issue in the feet already, take it very slow because it is going to give you a workout beyond what you think is possible and you'll be very, very sore the following day. Anyway, let's go out onto the gym floor and talk about a bit of the practice side of what we can do. Okay, so I've got a bunch of tools here that I've just grabbed from our gym floor. We've got a rumble roller, we've got a 45 centimeter, 15 centimeter diameter, so that's 150 mil and 450 mil foam roller. And that's uh, got a fair bit of give in it, it's not that solid, this one's a lot harder. And then we've got a hockey ball, 
We've got two specific massage balls. These are just spiky balls. They come in different shapes and sizes. You can get these on eBay and a golf ball. So these are all tools that you can use to start with. So the first step of alleviating that tension is going to be to specifically stretch and do what we call self myofascial release of the tendon underneath the foot. Now, depending on the severity of your plantar fasciitis, you're gonna have to do this gently, obviously, okay? The first thing we wanna do, and step number one, is literally to stretch the arch of the foot. And we do that just by grabbing the sole of the foot and stretching out. You can bend your knee a little bit and that'll allow you to get deeper into the sole of the foot and I'm just literally grabbing the toes and pulling the toes back towards my shin like that. Now we usually do that, uh, let's say for sets, maybe three or four sets a few times a day and each time you'll stretch it for about 20 to 30 seconds and then release and, and do the opposite, scrunch up the foot. So stretch and scrunch up. Now the next thing that I can do to help with that is that I can use is that I can use what's called a D roller and that's a half foam roller and do the same thing so I can step onto here stretch it that way and I can also massage the sole of my foot there by going back and forth that way. So that's the first probably intro level stretch that we're gonna do. Once you feel like you've got a little bit of that uh, muscle and tendon relaxing, then we can go to step two. Step two is going to be self myofascial release. Now, the smaller and the harder the ball, the harder this is gonna feel. A golf ball is great because you can pick these up for free usually from your local golf club or any of your mates who play golf. They'll have an old ball that they can use. And literally all we're doing Using that picture that I had on the board that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get uh, uh, my amazing film editor to pop up in the, in the frame here, is you're just going to run up and down that fascial line, the plantar fascia, up and down, massaging it out, as o and only applying as much pressure as you can handle at this time. Now, I don't have plantar fasciitis, so I can really get into this, but this is also just a great way to alleviate tension in the feet. Now, guys, if you've been using supported shoes your whole life, the muscle systems in the feet and calves are likely to have completely shut down. And that's a big problem because it's the leading cause of a lot of these issues, you know. We need to make sure that the muscles in the feet stay strong, which is why we train barefoot at Unity Gym. We want to keep these muscles really engaged and really strong. Now, I would probably start with a larger size ball. It doesn't really matter if it's spiky or not because of the, so the hard pad on the foot. You're not going to really feel the spikes that much, but it's quite nice. The spiky ball is really good for you. It's going to help stimulate blood flow and a few other things. It's not a bad idea to use that spiky ball. So really get into it, really get into the tendon. You can flex, plantar flex and dorsiflex the ankle whilst you do it. There's a whole different why, uh, uh, there's a few different methods of how you can do this. Once we've built up a little bit of ability and tolerance on the sole of the foot, it's time to start moving up into the muscles that can, uh, that, that are a leading factor in the plantar fasciitis, which is the calf, the soleus and the gastrocnemius and the perennials down the side of the shin. So now what I'm gonna do is come down onto the floor here and we're going to go from using the massage balls to using the softer of the foam roller. And basically all we're trying to do here is roll these calves out nice and easy. Now this for me is very easy. Uh, I would be using the rumble roller or a massage ball because I've got a high tolerance to this foam rolling now. I've been doing it for a very long time. For many of you this might be enough using the softer foam roller and just really getting into these tendons. You can apply a bit of pressure with, by using your other foot. I'm supporting all of my weight now through my wrists and through the foam roller. And then I'm also going to plantar flex, point the toe and dorsiflex, pull the toes back as I'm doing this. So I'm lengthening and contracting the tendons as I'm rolling. Now, once you've built up a bit of tolerance on the softer of the foam rollers, I would progress to a rumble roller. This is going to hit deeper into those tendons and we do the exact same thing.
plantar flex, dorsiflex, pulling those tendons up and down. We can work through here. We can obviously work into the perennials more and into the shin. We want to hit all of these muscles on a regular basis. You can do this three or four times a week. You can do it every day. We do it with our guys pretty much every day. We roll different areas of the body. Once we've built up a bit of tolerance to that, then we can move to using the massage balls. And this is obviously a smaller contact point, so it's gonna be a lot harder on the tendons, and you'll get a lot deeper, you'll get a better result, but for many of you, it'll be a little bit too intense to start with straight away. We can apply pressure on there, and really work into those tendons. We can plant our flex, dorsiflex again, opening the tendons up and we're doing that myofascial release on the calf. At, that, at this point, we need to move to step four, which is going to be to actually lengthen the soleus and gastrocnemius. So we'll just reposition the camera for this one. Actually, no, stay there. I'll bring it over here. All right. You rolling? Yep. So, what I've got here is a calf block. Now you can make one of these up, you can use a step, you can use whatever you need. This one was bought off Amazon and uh, it works really well. Usually it's got a plate bolted to the back for a bit more stability so it won't tip over, but for the purposes of this video we'll be all right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm placing my foot up on top of that calf block, my heel on the floor. So now I'm getting a stretch in the soleus muscles down the bottom through the back of the gastrocnemius and I'm gonna pull myself forward, stretching that ankle, getting that um, dorsiflexion. So I can feel a really nice stretch here. The more weight I push forward, and it's crucial at this stage to have your knee bent to a 90 degree angle. Having the knee bent allows you to really hit the soleus and the Achilles tendon and the, the fascia line down into the ankle there. If I was to straighten the knee, it's gonna bring the stretch up into the gastrocnemius, which is still a good stretch and something we need to do, but it's not what the stretch I was going for at the time. Beautiful. So we go back and forth through here, up and down, stretching those um, tendons, all of the tendons that run down into the foot now. And then the last one we wanna do is actually do a rotational stretch on here. So we're opening up through the hip, Nice and easy. And another really great way of doing this is if I have support from a wall. So we'll go over here quickly. If I'm stretching on here, then I can rotate nice and easily through that stretch with my hips. Then I can drop that back and I can do a 360 degree rotational stretch through here as well. Now remember that these stretches are getting progressively more difficult and more intense, a little bit harder, and they're gonna affect the calf and ankle a little bit more. So start gently and work up to it, okay? And the final step is probably the most obvious, which is to strengthen the calves. So I've already spoken about the gold standard in foot strength which is to train barefoot, to, to remove your dependency on support. And that will include arch support, guys. Like if you've been diagnosed uh, from a podiatrist arch supports, at some point you're gonna have to probably focus on strengthening the tendons because the arch is like putting a brace on it, the arch support, the orthotics. And there are a, a, a few circumstances where the foot has gone so far beyond repair that you'll probably be reliant on that um, orthotic for, for, for the rest of your life. I have seen some cases like that, but it's not that often. In most cases, we can retrain the feet to work properly. And in order to do that, you need to progressively overload the muscles in the feet and calf. So obviously, removing your arch support and going for a run is absolutely not what I recommend. 
what you need to do is do small bouts of exercise on the foot, just like normal workout in the gym. You don't go out and do a marathon runner's run the first time you go for a run, you build up to it, you know? You need to do the same in your foot. So little five minute bouts without the support on the beach, on the soft sand, strengthening those um, uh, arches is gonna really help building up to being able to do 10, 15 minutes without arch support. And then when you go to the gym, do small training sessions barefoot where you're, stre you're forcing the muscles in the feet to actually switch on, okay? Slowly, progressively overloading the calves and the tendons in the feet as they build strength up. And it has to be slow. If you've relied on arch support and orthotics for a long period of time, there's gonna be a massive disconnect between the muscles in your feet and your calves and your brain. They will not just switch on like that because they've, they haven't had to. But here's the thing, what happens when you outgrow the orthotics? Uh, there's gonna come, come a time when your body becomes so reliant on the orthotics that they no longer work. And then what, do we just not walk anymore? Like there, there, there definitely needs to be a push to go back and train the feet. So, we're gonna go up onto the, uh, the calf raise, let's say hypothetically twice a week you've gone to the beach and done your soft sand walking. Now we're gonna hit the gym and we're gonna start doing some calf strengthening work. We want to hit the calves from all angles and it's best to start from a fully stretched position. So I'm stretching my calves out, I have my toes out and now I'm going to come right up on the balls of my feet, contracting the calves as much as possible, all the way back down, stretch up, hold for two seconds, all the way back down. We can do about 10 to 20 reps on the gas drop. They usually respond best to about 12 reps. Uh, so we can start loading that once it becomes too easy. And then we can also change the angle. So before I had my toes out, now I'm gonna have feet straight. And I can progress to doing that. So let's say do four weeks or four workouts with the toes out four weeks or four workouts with the feet straight, and then four weeks or four workouts with the toes in, and that's gonna hit the gastro the most out of everything. Then we also need to hit the gastro from a bent knee position. Sorry, the, the soleus. And so many gyms have a calf raise machine, and some of them won't. So if you don't have a calf raise machine, what we need to do is put some weight on the knees here, and we stand right up on the toes. So you can hold a weight plate here, you can hold a barbell, you can hold dumbbells, right up on the toes, big stretch at the bottom, right up on the toes. So just by leaning forward here, I'm getting a little bit of a workout. I'd probably need a little bit more weight than this to really stimulate my soleus muscles. Soleus muscles like higher repetition, so we usually go anywhere from 20 to 40 reps on the bent knee calf raises. You can do single leg, you can do bilateral, double leg. And then the final one we wanna do is to work the perennials on the outside of the shin. And the way we do that is that we actually pop a weight down on the toe, so I would use a five or 10 kilo plate here on my toe and I'm just gonna lift that weight up. Two, and the perennial is like around 15 to 20 reps as well. Three, four, so you can see there my perennial really contracting through the shin as I'm going up. And you do three sets of each of those. So there's four exercises to strengthen. Soft sand walking, We've got our straight leg and bent leg calf raises, and we've got our plantar and dorsiflexion for the perennials loaded. And there are machines that, you, that some gyms have that help you work the perennials like that. Uh, I haven't found them necessary. I find that just leaning a weight on your toe works really, really well. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's the, the in, in a nutshell, how to overcome plantar fasciitis. Now, Couple of things to finish off with. Will plantar fasciitis go away on its own? In, some, in many cases, yes. It can, it can take six to 12 months to fully be, uh, no longer be a problem. 
but you generally have to change or alter your lifestyle, your behaviours. Uh, it, it, it may be your sport that you're playing, it may have been just one single abusive load where you jumped and landed heavily on the foot with not such good um, foot support that caused a lot of uh, stress and tension to that tendon and to that um, fascial line through there. Uh, it may be an overuse injury where you've just repetitively abused that area of your body and it's now inflamed or you may be overweight and you're carrying too much weight and when you started to exercise or move about a little bit more the muscles and tendons in your feet are just struggling a little bit to, to move you around. The long and the short of it is, is that to overcome this once and for all, you are going to have to focus on keeping a healthy body composition, keeping your ankles and calves nice and flexible and mobile, so they're not holding a lot of tension, so eradicating the high heels is a must for that, and choosing the right footwear is important. And then finally, you've got to strengthen these suckers, man. They shouldn't be neglected. Feet and calves should not be neglected. Now, we do it easily with our guys here because we promote barefoot training, but I know a lot of gyms, they don't. And so you're gonna to have to think outside the square and maybe go to the beach, you know? Uh, uh, maybe walk around at home a little bit more barefoot. Whatever it is, just give those muscles and tendons in your foot a chance to activate, to switch on. As far as I know, there's 28 muscles and uh, in, in the uh, 28 joints in the foot, and as many muscles almost. So it's it's a super important area of the body that needs movement, just like any other joint. If you mask it and you don't let it move, it ends up becoming a problem. So free your feet, give them a chance to breathe, give them a chance to exercise, and uh, hopefully over time you'll be commenting on how unreal your feet feel and uh, that you've overcome your plantar fasciitis. Anyway, till next time guys, shoot any questions through, comments, whatever it is. If you want us to make a video about anything specific, please send us a comment. We love to do it for you. And uh, otherwise, just share the love. Share this with anyone that you think might benefit from it. Thanks very much. Have a great day.